In 2021, Virgin Group launched its first space tourist flight. The voyage only lasted an hour, but cost each traveler $250,000, and they didn't even do a spacewalk. This isn't too surprising, though, as even a spacesuit can't guarantee total protection from harmful space radiation that can mess up your DNA. Besides, space junk or tiny meteorites could damage the spacesuit. So, not every company is up for taking those risks. While the price of a ticket to space might rise up to $55 million, but the first mobile phones also used to be unavailable to the public. So maybe one day space travel will be just another vacation option. But where could humankind's space ambitions lead? And which cosmic nooks and crannies pose the biggest threats? In this video, you'll find out which planet would make it impossible for you to last even one second. How can you set up a home in a hydrogen ocean? And which planet would transform you beyond recognition? And in general, what would happen to humans on different planets of the solar system? Stepping out into open space, devoid of atmosphere, is every space traveler's first step. Spacesuit will save you from the lack of oxygen in the complete vacuum. But what if it malfunctions or gets damaged by micrometeorites? The first thing you might think of is freezing instantly because the temperature in space is absolute zero. Well, not quite. The thing is, it's not about the cold, but rather heat transfer. In this case, the space vacuum gives you a major advantage. You'd sooner get cold sitting on a cold rock in winter than in open space, as in the vacuum, there's nowhere for your body heat to go. A more threatening thing would be a lack of oxygen. Without it, you couldn't last more than two minutes. But even the oxygen wouldn't save you because, due to the absence of pressure in open space, the oxygen in your lungs would start expanding literally tearing them apart, and your blood would boil, stopping the circulation. Divers face a similar, though way less severe, risk when they ascend from the deep sea and experience a massive pressure drop. Therefore, to protect yourself at least a little before doing a spacewalk without any protection, try to exhale as much as you can from your lungs. It won't save you from other horrifying effects, though. All the fluids in your body, like blood and tears, will start to boil and expand. Consequently, the rest of your body fluids would also expand, but your skin would be stretchy enough to handle the pressure change. So those gruesome movie scenes of people exploding in space are total fiction. Let's just hope they can get you back on board in time, because our next stop is the moon. Back in 2017, SpaceX announced a tourist flight around the moon sponsored by Japanese billionaire Yusaka Maizawa. The businessman even launched a TV show to find a companion to spend six days in space with him. But he refused that idea later. Instead, he decided to bring eight artists aboard, hoping to inspire them to create something new. But even this flight will go without landing on the moon, and for good reason. Just like open space, the moon has no atmosphere, pressure, or oxygen. Its only advantage is that, in a spacesuit, you can bounce super high and far thanks to the moon's weaker gravity compared to Earth's. But the suit isn't going to shield you from meteorite hits, which are pretty common on the moon. Plus, you could fall into one of those deep craters and lose contact with your spacecraft. At the same time, moon dust could damage the air supply system and dirty up your visor, thus making it hard to see and might even harm the suit itself. But the moon is just a pit stop on a real interplanetary voyage. Traveling to Mars is only a matter of time. NASA is actively developing cutting-edge spacecraft engines that will reduce the travel time to just four months. Elon Musk is even planning to establish the first colony on Mars as part of a special SpaceX program. And conveniently, a Martian day nearly matches an Earth day, 24 hours and 39 minutes. Potential colonizers are attracted by Mars's vast surface area, which is almost equivalent to all of Earth's continents combined. 
there's the presence of an atmosphere and Martian soil suitability for growing plants and the potential for extracting fuel and, most importantly, water. But you could hardly go outside to water your garden without a spacesuit, as the average temperature on Mars is minus 63 degrees Celsius. And if you dared to venture out unprotected, mind that the thin Martian atmosphere wouldn't shield you from harmful solar radiation. So you'd freeze and have radiation burns at the same time. And the intense dust storms would ensure you had little to no chance of survival. Worst of all, owing to the low atmospheric pressure, the liquids in your body would begin to evaporate and you'd literally dry out. It seems staying inside a greenhouse or on board a spacecraft might be the best bet, at least until Mars has undergone terraforming in about a thousand years or so. If even the most Earth-like planet is so lethal for humans, what might be awaiting us in other corners of the solar system? If you've survived a journey to Mars, you've rightfully earned the title of an experienced space traveler and are set to embark on an expedition to one of the most extreme planets. A single day on Mercury spans 176 Earth days, so you might not have much time to enjoy a sunset on this planet closest to the Sun. To endure even a few minutes on Mercury, your spacesuit needs to withstand temperatures of up to 400 100 degrees Celsius, or down to minus 180 if you're a fan of night strolls. In Mercury's case, the latter might be the right decision. During the day, powerful solar storms could disrupt all the equipment on your spacecraft. Then your spacesuit would offer little protection, and you'd get roasted in the flow of the searing solar winds. And if you manage to scream for help, you'd probably just end up making everyone laugh. This is because Mercury's extremely thin atmosphere contains traces of helium which distorts the voice. However surprising it may sound, there is a planet that's even hotter and more dangerous than Mercury. You would truly need to be a fearless explorer to venture to Venus. Its atmosphere is primarily composed of carbon dioxide, resulting in a greenhouse effect that pushes the average temperature on the planet to 467 degrees Celsius. We haven't yet invented an alloy that can withstand the harsh conditions of Venus. Thus, if you dare to land on it, don't count on your spacesuit. Just five seconds and a roasted human is ready. Don't hope for a cool night either, as a day on Venus lasts for 230 Earth days, ensuring its atmosphere is evenly heated. But even without the scorching heat, the surface pressure, which is 90 times greater than Earth's, would crush you. So if you're planning a trip to Venus, it would be best to stick to a sightseeing tour from orbit, especially since the journey to the next planet in the tour would be very long. Jupiter is more than five times farther from the Sun than the Earth. The gas giant itself is so massive that it could fit 1,300 Earths within it. However, despite its size, Jupiter rotates incredibly quickly, completing a turn every 10 hours. To truly visit this giant planet, you'd have to jump from a spacecraft straight into its clouds because it has no solid surface. Such a dive would be extreme because of the stark contrast range. From minus 185 degrees in Jupiter's upper layers to 1700 degrees Celsius in its ocean of condensed hydrogen, marking the end of your visit. Meanwhile, storms with winds reaching up to 600 kilometers per hour would buffet you around, especially if you dive into the Great Red Spot, which is a colossal storm. Isn't it better to admire it from a telescope? But that seems much too conventional. Even after such an extreme tour, I'm sure many wouldn't want to return to dull old Earth. But to settle on planets within the solar system, you'd need to demonstrate extraordinary adaptability. What would your home on different planets be like? Recently, NASA held a contest to design a Mars colony, won by a team from Arkansas. They proposed building small two-story homes using a kind of space 3D printer, as it would be safer for humans. 
A robot will gather the building material directly from the Martian surface. This way, an entire settlement could be established. Thanks to the rounded shape, the structures will be more resistant to dust storms, while the large windows will capture maximum light for indoor plants that will oxygenate the living spaces. Of course, the buildings will be fully airtight, with a special two-stage entrance to maintain habitable conditions inside. However, this doesn't solve Mars's primary problem, the vulnerability of its surface to cosmic radiation. This radiation damages DNA, resulting in colonizers having an extremely high risk of developing cancer. Moreover, living in an enclosed space with limited communication 225 million kilometers away from Earth is likely to cause inevitable apathy and depression among the colonizers. So, could there be any better options elsewhere? How about the planet closest to the sun? On Mercury, you surely wouldn't want to build a cottage with panoramic windows, even if you were a sunbathing enthusiast. The extreme temperature swings would leave you with little choice but to dig deep. But don't be dismayed. Even a bunker can be made comfortable enough for living. The key is to dig near ice deposits to ensure access to water. And don't forget about solar panels. They'll come in very handy on Mercury. If you feel lonely, you'd be comforted to know that signals from Mercury reach Earth in just five minutes, so you could always chat with your friends. Yet. Even underground on Mercury, you'd find it hard to relax. You'd frequently hear meteorite impacts from above that could damage your shelter. But the most significant threat would be the powerful ground shifts forming cracks that could compromise the air tightness of your home or block all the exits, literally burying you alive. So could settling somewhere in the sky be a solution? It's not as far-fetched as it sounds. In fact, the only viable way to colonize Venus is to settle approximately 50 kilometers above its surface, where the atmospheric pressure is almost the same as Earth's. So, you'd have to craft a home within an airship, fitting it with robust protection from the sun on the outside and solar panels for energy generation. And if you were planning to visit your neighbors, you need to consider designing secure connections between your airships. Hmm, sounds like a plan. This is actually similar to what NASA is working on. However, we don't yet know what to do with the highly acidic fog and rainfall, even at that altitude. If your Venusian airship malfunctioned, you'd be forced into an emergency descent to the surface with all the horrifying consequences that would come with it. On Jupiter, similar airships would be entirely unfeasible due to the planet's powerful winds. To survive in Jupiter's dense clouds, your home would have to resemble a sturdy bubble with reliable impact protection. However, a typical day on Jupiter might feel like you're perpetually on a roller coaster, with your home being tossed and turned in various directions. Such a living condition could induce severe seasickness, and swelling of your legs on top of that because the Jovian gravity, which is two and a half times greater than Earth's, would make it challenging for blood to travel up through the vessels. You'd have to lie down most of the time, but you could also enjoy close-up views of Jupiter's moons and magnificent polar auroras. Apparently, even high-tech habitats may not be enough for us to safely colonize other planets. The core issue is that our bodies are specifically adapted to Earth's conditions. But what if we could change that? How could humans evolve on different planets of the solar system? If we indeed colonize Mars, within just 6,000 years, the skin of humans on Mars would turn orange as the usual melanin would be replaced by keratinoids, the pigments found in carrots. At the same time, due to the weaker gravity, bones would become significantly thinner and muscles weaker. Our heads would increase in size relative to our bodies, and so would our eyes since Mars receives less sunlight than the Earth. However, in any case, humans wouldn't be able to breathe the Martian carbon dioxide atmosphere, so they'd always need to carry oxygen with them. It seems we would evolve into the Martians from Mars attacks. 
it would be impossible to adapt to the conditions of Mercury without the true wonders of genetic engineering. To survive on the planet closest to the sun, your skin would have to be made of a fire-resistant metallic alloy, but you would always look positively radiant. Besides, your eyes would need powerful sunlight protection. But oxygen would still pose a problem. Unable to withstand the heat, tanks would explode. So your air reservoirs would have to be embedded right into your back, similar to how camels store water. Would you like to be such a humpback of mercury? But even this wouldn't help on Jupiter. The only thing you could do there would be to descend into the depths of its atmosphere where the gas is denser, where it becomes a liquid and forms a hydrogen ocean. Then we could borrow some bodily changes from Earth creatures who are living in somewhat similar conditions. For example, the Lancelet. It lives in several thousand meter depths and can endure very high pressures. Or, to ensure survival, it might be worth borrowing adaptations from the isopod. This would involve a tough exoskeleton to withstand the pressure, along with a tail and webbing between fingers for more efficient swimming in the liquid. However, what and how you breathe in such an environment remains unknown to science. Surprisingly, Venus appears more hospitable in this context. In 2020, scientists detected phosphine molecules 50 kilometers above the Venusian surface. On Earth, this molecule is either produced by microbes in the guts of animals or results from industrial activities. Since there are certainly no factories on Venus, the phosphine molecules might indicate the existence of unknown microorganisms that metabolize sulfur. So, if you aim to survive on Venus, you might have to resemble a germ. Or you could become a giant amoeba hovering in the Venusian clouds. It sounds terrifying, but such is the cost of adaptation. It seems the deeper we delve into space and try to inhabit it, the less human features we would keep. However, there might be a compromise. Japanese molecular biologist Takekazu Kunieda has been researching tardigrades, microscopic creatures capable of surviving in space. Despite their tiny size, they can endure dehydration that would otherwise destroy other animals' DNA. The tardigrades also possess a unique type of protein that protects their DNA from damage, even from X-ray radiation. Most impressively, this protein has been infused into humans, making the test subjects 40% more resistant to X-ray radiation. Who knows, maybe this is what our distant space descendants will look like. To me, it doesn't sound too bad. But tell me, would you want such great-grandchildren?